a young couple are on their way to Vegas to get married. Before getting there, the girl says to the guy that she has a confession to make. The reason that they have not been too intimate is because she's very flat-chested. If he wishes to cancel the wedding, it's okay with her. The guy thinks about it for a while and says he does not mind that she is flat and sex is not the most important thing in a marriage. Several miles down the road, the guy turns to the girl and says that he also wants to make a confession. He says that below his waist, he's just like a baby. If the girl wants to cancel the marriage, it's okay with him. The girl thinks about it for a while and says that she does not mind and that she also believes there are other things far more important than in a marriage. They are happy that they are honest with each other and go on to go to Vegas and get married. On their wedding night, the girl takes off her clothes. She's as flat as a washboard. Finally, the guy takes off his clothes. One glance at the guy's naked body and the girl faints and falls to the floor. After she regains consciousness, the guy says, I told you before we got married, why did you still faint? The girl says, you told me it was just like a baby. The guy replies, yes, 8 pounds and 21 inches. <laughs> Annoyed by the professor of anatomy, who liked to tell naughty stories during class, a group of female students decided that the next time he started to tell one, they would all rise and leave the room in protest. The professor, however, got wind of their scheme just before class the following day. So he bided his time. Then, halfway through the lecture, he began. They say there's quite a shortage of pro in France. The girls looked at one another, arose and started for the door. Young ladies, said the professor with a broad smile. The next plane doesn't leave until tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> then lies on his deathbed surrounded by his family, a weeping wife and five children. Four of the children are tall, good-looking, and athletic. But the fifth and the youngest is an ugly runt. Darling wife, the husband whispers, assure me that the youngest child really is mine. I want to know the truth before I die. I will forgive you if... The wife gently interrupts him. Yes, my dear, absolutely no question. I swear on my mother's grave that you are his father. The man dies happy. The wife mutters under her breath, Thank God he didn't ask me about the other four. <laughs> An 18-year-old girl finally had the opportunity to go to a party by herself. Since she was very good-looking, she was a bit nervous about what to do if boys came on to her. Her mother said, It's very easy. Whenever a boy starts talking to you, you ask him, What will be the name of our baby? That'll scare them off. So off she went. After a little while at the party, a boy started dancing with her. Little by little, he started kissing her and touching her. She asked him, what will our baby be called? The boy found some excuses and disappeared. Sometime later, the same thing happened again. The boy started to kiss her neck and her shoulders. She stopped him and asked about the baby's name, and he ran off. Later on, another boy invited her for a walk. After a few minutes, he started kissing her, and she asked him, What will our baby be called? He continued, now slowly taking her clothes off. What will our baby be called? She asked once more. He began to have with her. What will our baby be called? She asked again. After he was done, he took off his full con, tied it in a knot, and said, If he gets out of this one, Houdini. <laughs> the young couple are on their way to Vegas to get married. Before getting there, the girl says to the guy that she has a confession to make. The reason that they have not been too intimate is because she's very flat-chested. If he wishes to cancel the wedding, it's okay with her. The guy thinks about it for a while and says he does not mind that she's flat and is not the most important thing in a marriage. 
Several miles down the road, the guy turns to the girl and says that he also wants to make a confession. He says that below his waist, he's just like a baby. If the girl wants to cancel the marriage, it's okay with him. The girl thinks about it for a while and says that she does not mind, and that she also believes there are other things far more important than in a marriage. They are happy that they are honest with each other and go on to Vegas and get married. On their wedding night, the girl takes off her clothes. She is as flat as a washboard. Finally, the guy takes off his clothes. One glance at the guy's body and the girl faints and falls to the floor. After she regains consciousness, the guy says, I told you before we get married. Why did you still faint? The girl says, you told me it was just like a baby. The guy replies, yes, 8 pounds and 21 inches. <laughs> a nurse was on duty in the emergency department when a punk rocker entered. The patient had purple hair plus a variety of tattoos and strange clothing. It was quickly determined that the patient had acute, so she scheduled for immediate surgery. When the patient was completely disrobed on the operating table, the surgeons noticed that her public hair had been dyed green, and just above it was a tattoo that read, Keep off the grass. After the surgical procedure was completed, the surgeon added a small note to the wound's dressing that said, Sorry, had to mow the lawn. <laughs> the man and woman were dating and he asked her to marry him. She told him that to prove his love to her, she wanted him to get her name Wendy tattooed on his penis. When it was erect, it said Wendy, and when it was limp, it said W-Y. They got married and went to Jamaica to a new beach for their honeymoon. Wendy asked her husband to get them a drink. So he went to a stand on the beach and noticed the man who was waiting on him also had a W-Y on his penis. He said, oh, you must have a wife named Wendy too. And the waiter said, no, my tattoo says, welcome to Jamaica, man. Have a nice day. <laughs> the man goes to the doctor complaining of elbow pain. The doctor tells him he needs a urine sample to test. The man complies and the doctor takes the cup to a very strange machine and pours it in. After a few seconds, the machine prints out a sheet of paper. The doctor tells the man, well, it looks like you have tennis elbow. The man argues, saying that there is no way. The doctor informs him that his new machine is 99% accurate. So the man, determined to fool the machine, goes home and has his daughter pee in a cup. Then he puts oil from his car in it and acts off in it. He takes it to the doctor and tells him he's not feeling well and gives him the cup. The doctor puts it in the machine and a few seconds later the paper prints out. Well, what does it say? Asks the man. The doctor just looks at him and replies, Well, your daughter is pregnant, your car needs an oil change, and if you don't stop your off, you'll never get rid of that tennis elbow. <laughs> the priest was driving along and saw a nun on the side of the road. He stopped and offered her a lift which she accepted. She got in and crossed her legs, forcing her groan to open and reveal a lovely leg. The priest took a look and nearly had an accident. After regaining control of the car, he stealthily slid his hand up her leg. The nun looked at him and immediately said, Father, remember Psalm 129? The priest was flustered and apologized profusely. He forced himself to remove his hand. However, he was unable to remove his eyes from her leg. Further on, while changing gear, he let his hand slip up her leg again. The nun once again said, Father, remember Psalm 129? Once again, the priest apologized. Sorry, sister, but the flesh is weak. Arriving at the convent, the nun got out. 
gave him a meaningful glance and went on her way. On his arrival at the church, the priest rushed to receive a Bible and looked up Paul 129. It said, go forth and seek. Further up, you will find the glory. <laughs> After just a few years of marriage filled with constant arguments, a young couple and his wife decided the only way to save the marriage was to try counseling. They had been at each other's throats for some time and felt that this was their last chance. When they arrived at the counselor's office, the counselor jumped right in and opened the floor for discussion. What seems to be the problem? Immediately, the husband hold his long face down without anything to say. On the other hand, the wife began talking 100 miles an hour describing all the wrong things within their marriage. After 5, then 10, then 15 minutes of listening to the wife, the counselor went over to her, picked her up by the shoulders, kissed her passionately for several minutes and sat her back down. The wife sat there speechless. He looked over at the husband who was staring in disbelief at what had happened. The counselor spoke to the husband. Your wife needs that at least twice a week. The husband scratched his head and replied, I can have her here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> Two women friends had gone out for a girl's night out and had been decidedly overenthusiastic on cocktails. Incredibly drunk and walking home, they suddenly realized they both needed to pee. They were very near a graveyard and one of them suggested they do their business behind a headstone or something. The first woman had nothing to wipe with, so she took off her panties, used them and threw them away. Her friend, however, was wearing an expensive underwear set and didn't want to ruin hers, but was lucky enough to savage a large ribbon from a wreath that was on a grave and proceeded to wipe herself with it. After finishing, they made their way home. The next day, the first woman's husband called the other husband and said, These damn girls' night outs have got to stop. My wife came home last night without her panties. That's nothing, said the other. Mine came back with a sympathy card stuck between the cheeks of her butt that said, From all of us at the fire station, we will never forget you. 